Here we are at the last part of Lecture 9. This should be Lecture 9C. We're looking at the temperature dependence of the Gibbs free energy. That's what we want. Let's just cut to the chase here. This is what we get. It's called the Gibbs-Hamholtz relation. This you probably don't recognize it in its present form, but as we'll see as we develop this equation, that this in fact is what we, you learned in introductory chemistry. That a plot of log k versus 1 over t gives you the standard enthalpy of formation, perhaps in a little different form. So let's uh, go ahead and try to figure out what the temperature dependence of the Gibbs free energy will be. In other words, what we want is how g changes with temperature at constant pressure and number of moles. Remember that g we said now is a function of three variables, temperature, pressure, number of moles. Let's hold these constant while we just look at the temperature dependence of T. What do we really want? Uh, we want to relate equilibrium constant to temperature really because that's something we can measure in the laboratory. Remember that delta G is a delta G zero plus RT times the natural log of Q or at equilibrium delta G zero is minus RT times the natural log of the equilibrium constant K is it at equilibrium. It's log k, the temperature dependence of that. Let's put this temperature over here so we're actually looking at delta G zero over T that will be equal to R ln k. I hope I convinced you by this little argument that really we should be looking at because this is where we want to go related to equilibrium constant that we should be really looking at the temperature dependence of G over temperature. So let's look at how G over temperature varies with temperature at constant pressure and number of moles. All right, so G will depend on temperature and certainly temperature depends on temperature. So we have to use that uh, rule of calculus which I can't really remember, but it'd be the first G times the derivative of the second one over T, how that varies with T, plus one over T, how G varies with temperature at constant pressure and number of moles. This also is constant temperature and number of moles. All right, so this would be G. We can take the derivative of one over temperature with respect to temperature. We got minus temperature squared plus uh, one over T. Oh, remember what this is? How G varies with temperature at constant pressure in N? That is equal to minus S from a uh, I think lecture eight, uh, last lecture. That's kind of cool. So we can just put a minus s here. Now let's uh, multiply this by, so we want to collect terms here. So we want a t squared there. So multiply this by t over t. That's one, we can always do that. So we'll get the t squared there. This will be ts. So by doing those manipulations, we end up with a minus g over t squared minus ts over t squared, and that's just equal to minus g plus ts over t squared. And remember that g was defined as h minus ts, so that g plus ts is equal to h. All right, let's just put h in there. This is minus h over t squared. So this says that how free energy changes, oh, sorry, how free energy divided by temperature changes with temperature is related to the enthalpy of the uh, whatever we're looking at. This is called the Gibbs-Hemholtz relation, uh, relation, and again what we're looking at is how G over T changes with temperature at constant pressure and number of moles. Let's relate the Gibbs-Hemholtz relation here. Let's relate that to equilibrium constant. We had, uh, let's see, uh, delta G zero is RT times the natural log of K or delta G zero over T is related to the natural log, sorry, I forgot about that R, R times the natural log of K. So let's take the derivative of both sides with respect to temperature, so the derivative of G zero over T 
Well, we can actually put a delta here because when you do G, you just put a delta there and a delta there. Actually, let's be, let me be explicit about that just rather than throwing it out there. So I'll keep those in mind in just a second. We'll use those. Okay, so I also claim that this can be written as how delta G over T changes with temperature at constant pressure number moles. That's equal to minus delta H over T squared. We just replace the G by delta. You can see that by the delta means final minus initial. So you just write, you know, final minus initial, final minus initial, and you get the same thing. Let's go to the next page here and put in instead of delta G, delta G zero, which will mean this delta H will be delta H zero. So how delta G zero over T varies with temperature that's equal to minus delta H zero over T squared. We know that delta G zero is minus delta G zero over T. We just said that, I'll just rewrite it here, delta zero T is equal to R minus, there's a minus sign there. Ah, getting too excited here, I should calm down. So minus R times the natural log of the equilibrium constant K. This is also equal to how the minus R times ln K changes with temperature. So let's rewrite this. We have how, uh, let's just do the ln of K versus temperature. And we're going to put the minus R over there. That's equal to delta H zero over R T squared. Well, we can do a little simplification here know that we can actually show this a derivative of or d1 over t is equal to minus uh, derivative t over t squared so you take the derivative with respect to 1 over t that's minus 1 over t squared or in other words that the derivative dt is equal to minus t squared times d1 over t so that's what we're going to put in there so we have how natural log of K changes one over one over temperature. And here we have minus one over T squared. That is equal to delta H zero over R T squared. Let's multiply by minus T squared. That will go away. So what we end up with is the how LN K varies with one over temperature that's just equal to minus delta H zero over R. In other words, if you measure the equilibrium constant as a function of temp a one over temperature, so this would be K, or, and let's plot the natural log of the equilibrium constant versus one over temperature, we're going to get some data that would be positive or negative, but what we're saying here is the slope will be equal to minus d delta H zero over R. Or in other words, delta H zero will be minus R times the slope of this line. So there's a way to get a standard enthalpy change for some reaction. Just measure the equilibrium constant for the reaction as a function of temperature and plot log equilibrium constant versus one over temperature. The slope will give you and multiply it by minus R that will give you the standard enthalpy change. All right, so notice that this is the slope at any particular temperature. Uh, let's integrate both sides of this. So we'll multiply by one over T. So let's integrate ln K going from K1 to K2, initial and final state. That's equal to minus, or the integral going from T1 corresponding to that equilibrium constant to T2 of minus delta H zero over R integrated over D one over T. This is D log K, D natural log of K. So let's go ahead and integrate that. On the left hand side, we got the natural log of K two final over K one initial. That's integral to uh, delta H zero over R D one over T. 
Now what we're going to do is, this, well, r is a constant, so we can pull that out. But let's assume that delta H0, the standard enthalpy of the reaction, does not depend on temperature. So we can pull that out, so delta H0 over r, the integral of 1 over t, a value between t1 and t2. Here we're assuming that delta H0 is independent of temperature. And that then is equal to just delta H0. And of course I forgot the minus sign there. Okay, so did I get the minus sign here? There it is there. So I forgot to carry it along. Minus, minus delta H over R, 1 over T2 minus 1 over T1. This you may or may not recognize is the equation that's thrown out in introductory chemistry. Let's write what's over here, ln of K2 over K1. So you have one, two, three, four, five things. And if you know any four of the five things, you can calculate the fifth. So for example, if you know the standard enthalpy of reaction, and you know the equilibrium at one equilibrium constant at one temperature, then you could find the equilibrium constant at another temperature. Again, this is an example. Uh, you learn chemistry at various stages. So in inductor chemistry, we knew about this. And now we were able to derive this using the fact that, or using our partial differential skills. And this cool thing here that, where is it? It's around here somewhere. There it is, that how G changes the T, a constant pressure, or moles is minus s. So that cool thing and the partial derivatives and all that other stuff, we end up with the introductory equation that's thrown out in introductory chemistry. All right, so that ends uh, lecture nine, and I'll now go work on lecture 10.